my non-binary folks. Thanks for tuning into another episode of Cannabis and Coffee. What's up, guys? It's me, Simona. We're here to help make this audio with you guys today. Yeah, so um, hope you all ready for a good time. We're about to get cooking in the kitchen. As she said, we're about to make some risotto. I did not uh, block out any of these company labels. So <laughs> let's get that out of the camera view right there. And um, cause they, they, they ain't cash out, but it is cool. Um, we're going to get this party started with y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Here's a quick video while we finish getting everything set up. So we are here, Simona Sykes, yeah. and um, she's about to show me how to cook up some risotto. Uh, we got a half a cup of cannabis infused coconut oil with some sour banana OG uh, batter, straight from our folks at um, Clean Labs. Folks at Clean Labs, so shout you, out to that batter. Shout out to y'all for that. Uh, definitely can't wait for us to sit down and talk. And uh, I know y'all got some more products on the way. But uh, tell me more about this risotto. So risotto, um, I've always really kind of loved carbs. And I've been working at restaurants for probably three years before I moved here. And okay. They've always been like really nice, like five star restaurants, and I've had good relationships with food and the cooks there, so they always kind of were open to show me what they're doing. And you, you just know. like took some recipes, yeah. Home, basically, it's like, like you know, why would I bomb. go to college for cooking if I'm around them? So, right. just get their information and make it at home. So, okay, okay, yeah, so you were gracious enough to come and um yeah. share your recipe here today with us on Can of Cooking with Matoski, and yeah. Aaron just. Gracefully helped us <laughs> get the label covered up because you know sponsorship, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so where do we start? What, what do I need to get? So we usually need to start with the rice, and I will say it's not any kind of rice that you'll be using. It's going to be our boreo rice. So it's going to be um, like typically jasmine rice and white rice is a lot more um, fluffier. Okay. This rice is going to be dense. It's going to have a nice bite to it. It's going to have more like a pasta like flavor. So, nice. Or, yeah, texture. So. And so this is called mm -hmm. what again? Um, Arborio? Arborio rice. Arborio. Yeah, there you go. Arborio. Arborio rice. <laughs> Arborio rice. Yeah. Come get it here. I'm, yeah, that's, that's my best Mario or impersonation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it. Like if you're vegetarian, you can put like, you know, broccoli, peas, mm -hmm. mushrooms, you know, you can really go crazy. So you can get, you can get real creative yeah. with this. It doesn't just have to stick with peas. No, it doesn't have to be like, it could be, um, like people put scallops on top. That's oh, very, wow. very common to see with those others. So. Okay. And yet you mentioned, uh, when we were texting about it, you mentioned the uh, um, mushroom that people oh, know yeah. that you go with mushrooms. Mushrooms and like uh, basil or some thyme in there. Mm. Um, but today I have something a little bit different. Um, okay. We're going to do roasted olives on top. So Ooh. we'll add a nice little salty. I don't know. Roasted olives. <laughs> what do you know about that? Roasted olives. Roasted. What do you know about that? Um, so I have the oven preheated to 350. Okay. And that's going to. Just be nice to fill the olives in, like, we can forget about it for a little bit while the rice oh. is cooking. 
So let me let me grab. I guess we need a bowl for mixing, or no? No, we don't mix anything. Really. What? No, the the rice just goes. I love this already. <laughs> We're not mixing anything, no, no. not any, no extra dishes and everything. So, I mean, we really, we really can get to some of our questions while we're yeah. waiting on all of this. That's perfect. So, uh, let's do that then. How about that? So, why don't you introduce yourself to the people? Yeah. Tell, tell everybody who's Samara. I, like, I, I, I mean, you, you, right here is perfect where you, where you are. Um, um, yeah, so tell the people who you who Simona is? So I am um, a person, guys. I'm an individual. <laughs> so I um, I'm a musician, generally like a just really creative person. I love to write music. I like to paint, and mm-hmm. you know I'm getting into modeling this year. It's something that I've had a passion for, but I've been very low key about it. But decided I can't really be low key about myself anymore. I got to be talented for it. So exactly, kick the motherfucking yeah. door down. <laughs> what you mean? What you mean, low key? So, so I think congratulations on starting the modeling career and pursuing that. That's yeah. very, you know, a courageous step to take. And um, a lot of people don't have that courage. Or it takes them forever to Definitely. build up their courage. I took two or four years. Like, I mean, yeah. that's still not forever. You know, yeah. like, on the grand scheme of things, 24 is such a short and time on the mm-hmm. planet. You know, and like, right. you got so much more time. You know, like, exactly. you're going to well, live three times I will say, how old you are now. I won't take my time for granted because... Nothing in life is guaranteed. So that is true. That um, is true. I'm happy that I got to this point at this point in my life, and you know, I don't want to be morbid, but if I were to go tomorrow, I, you know, I can't regret what I've done. I moved out here to Phoenix, and I'm making it for myself, and I'm going to school soon. So, I'm gonna be studying music therapy. I was about to say, what are you yeah, going to school for? I'm going to school for music therapy. Um, I play guitar and I am learning piano. I've been a singer like all my life, so it kind of makes sense that right. I. Hope Thanks for bringing yeah. the guitar as well. Yeah. I was wondering if you were going to be able to bring the guitar and play something for the folks before we ended our interview today. Um, we all get a treat today. She's going to cook. She's going to help cook. And yeah. um, she's going to play some music as well. So we got a very exciting episode to, you know, we're in addition to all of it. Yeah, That's exactly. Like the things I love to do. Like, <laughs> hi, music. This is this um, cooking is an art. Like, yeah, really it is. It, so it is. It's not that much of a difference. So, so um, you just tell the people who you are. Mm-hmm. I want to know what is your go-to song. My go-to song. <laughs> what? <laughs> For getting up in the morning, getting that day started off on the right foot. What are your go-to songs? For a while, I listened to Revolution by the Beatles every morning, yeah. and it was like just start a revolution, but in the happiest, the happiest way. And I feel like that's probably like a really good morning song. And wake up on a good note, and you're thinking, okay, well, how am I going to make a difference in the world? And I don't know, that's probably one of my go-to. But honestly, I listen to so much. Like, really depends on what kind of day I'm having, how I'm feeling, if I'm feeling crazy, if I'm feeling sad. So yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a really good song. That's mm-hmm. a really good song. I love the Beatles. Yeah. And uh, it. it's a, yeah, they got a, such a joyful vibe. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people they they forget about like how dreamy. It started. It was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was super dreamy. And um yeah, shout out to them. Um, but no shout out to Yoko <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what next? What what do we got going on? All right. Um, so we can go ahead we got the and... oven going. Yeah, the oven's probably preheated. Do we need to line this? Um, we could combine it with aluminum foil and then maybe like a stash of some oil to cook. That's beautiful. That's beautiful because guess what I got? We got some sour banana OG infused coconut oil Mm -hmm. to put on these bad babies. Mm, mm, mm. I'm excited. I'm super excited. Okay. So I'm going to turn here so we'll a little bit. I'm going over here with that. And uh, there we go. So here are olives. And I need a fork. Yeah. I'm cooking that. Turn it out. Fork. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Olives, they pretty much you have their own oil, so you don't have to go too crazy with it. But, okay. You know. So not too crazy, but just crazy. Put it on there. You know. <laughs> Since we got special oil, you might as well. Since we infuse <laughs> in it, you know. How, how many tablespoons of teaspoons do you normally put? Of what? Oil. Oh, I don't. Oil. I never. Uh, fun fact about me: I never measure anything. So. <laughs> oh. You just gotta go by uh, eyesight and feel. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, and for for sakes, yeah. for safety sakes, I'm going to use <laughs> two teaspoons of medicated oil on these, mm -hmm. and um. That shouldn't be a lot. I only use half a gram of concentrate, but the concentrate was at 90% THC. Ooh. We're going to use two of these. Beautiful, beautiful. And hopefully, thank you, thank you. Hopefully, you know, and it's not on too high, so we shouldn't cook a lot of it off. And we got plenty more. We got half a cup. To use, we're not gonna use all of that today. No. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not gonna use all that today. But we're gonna put these bad babies in the oven for how long? Um, you know, honestly, I just like throw it in there and forget about it. Okay, and then <laughs> when you like smell that, it, that aroma. Yeah, you want to wait for it to kind of wilt, so it could be at three fifty. It could be like in there for thirty minutes. You're not gonna really dry them out unless you keep them in there too long. But okay, it'll probably be like an hour, but. So those are in there, and then now let's go ahead and get the rice risotto going. Um, All right, and we need measuring cups for that as well. Or do you just you still, you eyeball? That. eyeball. So, should I just should I just stop <laughs> trying to? I'm about to try to measure everything. It, it me... depends on how much like, people are cooking yeah. for and like what what's the goal. So I can kind of show you guys. Okay, show me how to eyeball. All right, so. I'm gonna at least cover it in. So honestly, with risotto, it doesn't look like a lot, but it's gonna be a lot. Just like rice, it's mm -hmm. gonna cook up. And so then we have that. Um, and yeah, I want to see this on Instagram. That's what we're working with. I generally with. just make sure that the bottom is covered. Mm -hmm. um, since we are gonna be having a couple people eat, it's gonna be. Oops. <laughs> it's gonna be a good amount, I think. Okay. Um, Honestly, because it's, it's more people than what I could for normally. So let's do that. And as far as the liquids, there is this technique that I use. I did wash my hands. It's uh -huh. like a Chinese technique where you just fill it up with your like knuckle, like knuckle about. But you okay. can kind of eyeball it too. Um, I use either I use broth or I use water with seasonings. Um, I might use a little bit of these seasonings. I wasn't sure if he had broth or not, so. Some of the ones that I use to season my risotto is, of course, some chicken. Oh, well, I guess I should label it. Some chicken seasoning. <laughs> um, some Italian seasoning with basil. And um, I also like a little bit of chili pepper if I'm in a spicy mood. So nice. that's my list of some things you can just make your own broth with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this. And you're going to want to make sure it's covered. And also and cover all the rice yeah. with with some broth, any kind of broth you want. Veggie, chicken, really beef. And keep in mind, we probably are going to end up adding some more liquids to this. I like I pour kind of as I go and pay attention to it. Okay. So all right. note it, note it, because my high ass set up looking at recipes all day, yeah. watching other. Watching other people cook, and they were like, "Make sure you measure this precisely." Yeah. <laughs> It'll cook down, and then you add some more, and then if it's honestly you want it on the harder side, so if you do have to keep cooking it, then it's gonna be easier to make it tender. You don't want it to be too mushy. You don't want it to be too mushy. No. Remember that. You want a nice el dente or el dente, yeah. El dente. Okay. So, so I put the heat on a medium. And if you have a lid too, that'll be cool. But if not, definitely got a lid. Yeah. So there we do we have go. a lid. Beautiful. All right. So we got that going. Now we simply wait for a little bit until we so start it, turning. Yeah, we, is it time to smoke or drink a glass of this wine? It, yeah, it could be both. It could well, be both. <laughs> true. Let me go ahead and get a cup. Yeah. 
very cool. And then actually, if you have like a, I guess a bowl for the peas, and we'll saute the peas as well on the side. I'll need a smaller pea. Smaller, that's beautiful. You got that as well. Peas are honestly so slip on, and I know he's probably not watching right now, but shout out to D. He knows who he is. He turned me on to peas. Um, a really good professional chef that used to work at this restaurant called Bakra. And hey, he'll see the replay or hear yeah. it on Apple Music. I mean, Apple Podcast. Yes, yes. Shout out for the inspiration. Honestly, like, yeah, a lot of my inspiration in the kitchen is comes from how I have perceived it, and honestly, it's come from black people. Like, how right. black people interpret, you know, what they want to taste good. And so, what's your good. what's your ethnic Background. What should I think makeup? I would say I'm black. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone has kind of like a mixed ancestry, and I have like mixed ancestry with European. But I mean, I as, as my dad's black. black, my mom's black, my grandma's black, and as far as I know, like her mom's black. So <laughs> I, you know, I identify as an nice. American woman. And I forgot to put some of these graphics. Just so y'all could know where to find her, I'm going to make sure I put up her Instagram. Simona Sykes, a.k.a. Lil Baby Thickums on IG. <laughs> there it is. Let me tag you on IG. Lil Baby. And you know, honestly, that name. Where did that come from? <laughs> it's B A B I T H I. C U M Z. C U. Hold on. Little baby T H I C U M Z. M Z. Yep. Um. So the name pretty much ties in with my relationship with food too. I, for a while, um, I'm sure everybody had their own struggles with eating and everything like that. But mm. I definitely had problems when I was in middle school with anorexia and bulimia in high school, and so. After I kind of got older and my body started expanding, I didn't know how to take it. Like, I was still ordering stuff from when my body was different, and I, like, would get it in the mail and be, like, fuck, I'm too fat for this or anything like that. And then my sister was taking pictures of me, and she was like, no, I'm just a little thick, a little baby thick. <laughs> and so well, it, just kinda, it just stuck with me. And, yeah, ever since that day, I was like, no, I'm a little baby thick. It was just kind of like a new acceptance of my body type. Yeah. Even though I'm like not necessarily thick, thick, I, you know, I'm definitely thicker than I was before. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on yeah. that thickness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people don't embrace that. You yeah. Know, but you took that and you ran with it. You For know? sure. You said you dealt with anorexia, and I know going from, I don't want to say like one part of the spectrum or anything mm -hmm. like that, but like I know what you mean. Like going From From sure. That perspective of like dealing with trying to put on weight to then you're like, oh, I'm too big. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, it's like, you're perfect where you're at. Right. And time will come, you know, and then just embrace it. You know, um, that was like, so I think I was like 22. I, I commend yeah. you for that. You know, that's a, definitely a big move. A lot of people don't end up accepting, you know, life as mm -hmm. it is, you know, and start chasing other realities. Yeah. It's like in high school, like there wasn't enough images of women with stretch marks, or like we always had Kim K's ass like promoted to us, and I was yeah. like doing everything I could to get her body. I actually ended up like ripping a butt muscle doing these random like really. So were you on like squats. were you online like looking to do <laughs> there was, like, the Kim, Kim K, K challenges. butt challenge? Yeah, and I would do those, and I would hurt myself. Well, you do a green head. Yeah, thank you. But you know, um. This is not the Dispos container, but I did pick up some gelato from the Dispo. This is a custom container that I've created, and I will be having these on sale this year uh, once I've perfected them. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you grab you one of these custom stash jars coming soon. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought about mixing it with the gelato. And I was like, you know what? I got this sour banana that's sitting in here, and I need to go ahead and use that. Got to crack you up. Oh, yeah. Are you grabbing an avocado? Um, I don't no, know. No, that's not avocado. I don't think that's an avocado. 
I'm going to say, uh, you, yeah, you don't set the avocado in the water. You can set it in water, it. the seed. Yeah. And you can actually even eat avocados. But I don't, I got, you like soak them and you can grind them into something. But I got to mm. look it up. Because I was like, ugh, I don't want to be as wasteful. And I'm actually growing. So like, you know how sweet potatoes, they have, like they sprout, those purple sprouts. Just little, wanted to say hello, beautiful souls, off for dinner. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. She's one of the chefs in the cannabis uh, chef cooking competition I'll be competing in oh, on yeah. October 3rd. Um, speaking of which, if anybody is out in the Phoenix in the Valley, um, Cannabis Chef Phoenix is uh, coming October 3rd. I'll be one of the eight chefs on there cooking some medicated recipes. So, yeah, Check make sure y'all come in and come out and support. Yeah. Uh, but this is not about just me. This is about you and celebrating and learning from you about who you are, mm -hmm. the amazing recipes that you got, the dope music that you create, which is what I'm going to ask you about next. How long have you been playing music? Um, that's a tough answer because, I mean, really, it's been my whole life. I've started in like elementary school with violin, and I just kind of, I was like, probably like one of the first people to really get the posture of the violin and I had a passion for it, but I knew like my calling was guitar. So I kind of had like this struggle with my mom because she wanted me to be a violinist because she yeah. was like the number one violinist when she was in college. Okay. And I was just like, shout out to the moms. Yeah. Pushing me through music. Shout out to the moms. Honestly, she's, you know, she's the reason for everything. The reason I can cook three and I'm so yeah. creative. But Your mom's a really dope cook. Yeah, definitely. She loved Paula Deen. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, nice. I, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> try. Hey, hey, mom, I gotta try some of that cooking. <laughs> gotta try some of that cooking right there. Well, I mean, I'm about to try some from bit. the protege right here. A little bit. But, um, yeah, so I really pushed for guitar, and like I ended up like doing a bunch of chores around the house to get money, and I bought my first guitar from Walmart. And... Just kind of like the rest was history. I think I started like getting lessons when I was 12, but I put it down like when I was in high school. I was like super going through some things and mm -hmm. nothing brought joy, like not even guitar anymore. So I stopped playing for probably most of my high school career until like my senior year. And then like, that's when I knew I wanted to go to the next level with it. So I learned how to read music on guitar in college and I learned classical guitar in college. Um, but I still like always had a love for like electric guitar and like more like rock style. But I, you know, I don't want to limit myself because even my teacher, he started off as like a like electric rock guitarist, but he taught himself like how to play like classical and like Bach and you know stuff like that. So you don't really want to limit yourself. And I do wish I still play violin, but at the same time, you know, you gotta give and take. You can't do it all. Yeah. Like I said, I can't do it all. <laughs> uh, do you have a turner thing? Oh. Well, like a, almost a wooden spatula. Like, uh, like this? Actually, or? that would work. I think okay. that's what we do now. So. Um, you don't want to really turn it too much because you don't want to make it mushy. Right. Okay. Um. Usually at this point, like, when it gets a little softer, you can add stuff. Like if you had chopped mushrooms, you could put that in. You can put the garlic. Well, when it gets a little softer, you put the garlic in. Um, I'm smelling those olives. Let's check out and see what's going on. Yeah, the olives can literally be forever, but they're doing their thing. They're doing their thing. Um, if you want to help chop a shallot, which is very similar to an onion. I don't know if you guys know. Y'all know what a shallot is? It's like a little mini onion. It doesn't make you cry as much. It's good with meat. We gonna see. Good with peas. <laughs> we gonna see. <laughs> doesn't make you cry. Okay. So, I'm gonna chop this up. We got this cooking. Mm. How do you need 
to stop. Um, uh, so I guess smaller dice. pieces. Yeah, dice. Um, so I was thinking maybe the peas on the side. I really don't know. Because it'll go with the peas well. For the peas, I'm just like, I just do like a really simple seasoning of salt and pepper and then the shallots. And if you want like some garlic salt or garlic, that'll mm. make a pop. For the rice, when it's boiling, you just make sure that um, you're not burning it. So you can turn it a little bit to make sure it's not like sticking on the bottom. You still want to see a little bit of the moisture at the top. You don't really want to let it absorb everything until you um, mm -hmm. can see that it's taking shape. Kind of like how pasta gets bigger, the same thing is happening with the rice. So how did you, how do you find your music career? That's a is great that, question. I am like, I moved here two years ago. Like, honestly, I, I had enough making to get myself through a month, but I was just ready to get out. So I'm just saying, like, I'm not great at budgeting, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'll make something work. And I feel you. And you use that, uh, obviously, to get to where I am. Support your, your dream. Yeah, but I mean, I haven't really found, I haven't recorded, I haven't really, like, took an action on my music really, and that's part of it's because, like, you know, you get in your head a little bit and think about, like, is this any, like, does this even sound good? Because maybe you've heard the song for maybe, like, I don't know, you've had the song in your head for, like, a year and it yeah. doesn't really do anything. But, like, I also haven't really performed, so that I haven't really had, like, that feedback of someone else. Yeah, yeah the the feedback of someone else saying, like, oh, yeah, I get in the fucking studio. But also, I feel like I need to find, like, a comfortable, um, Comfortable like studio space because I hear like I feel like here in Phoenix there's a lot of like rappers and a lot of singers and there's not really like a lot of home studios that have a music setup mm -hmm. and I feel like when I do uh, home please. steps when I do wow. like home studio stuff I don't necessarily feel like it's as likely that they're gonna be as determined to get it done as if I go to a studio or something like that that's just been my experience in the past. Um, mm -hmm. Like when I go to somebody's home studio, like either they kind of get it done at their own time or, you know. Yeah, that's the unfortunate, um, unfortunate place of not being able to have like their own studio and stuff, or not have their own like in house engineer. Um, is having to work on people's time, and especially if those people weren't, um, excuse me for. Doing all the aluminum foil in your ear. If those people aren't, you know, as professional and punctual uh, with your material as you would be. Yeah, it can be very off putting. Um, but, and also, just like I'm a woman, <laughs> and most of the time, recording studio. Yes, it's spicy. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna, I already threw in some of my Italian seasoning. Okay. Um, sometimes I do give it like a little just sample taste to see if it's got the texture I want. Because, you know, honestly, I'm not 100% sure though, like all the time. So <laughs> you gotta like, like spaghetti. You play it by ear yeah. by, or by tongue. Play it by, by taste buds. Yeah, no. Shout out to the Tommy Off Powers. Um, Blood Fairy Art. Everybody, shout out to y'all for tuning in. I'm about to uh, open up this fish and get this seasoned with some Cajun seasoning oh, yeah. that I picked up from the farmer's market. This is a local company out here in Phoenix, Arizona. So make sure y'all go out to the Phoenix farmer's market. They set up there every weekend. And uh, you get your seasonings from them. There's some Cajun seasoning. This is uh, Ryan Allaire. Seasoning company. I think I think it was like two for fifteen or something like that. But yeah, it's uh they got some pretty bomb seasoning. I got like the everything bagel seasoning from them. This and then an Italian seasoning as well. Have you been out to the farmers market yet? No, is that the one that happened on Saturday? Yeah. 
I think yeah. they have live performances this time. It's pretty. Huh? They do. They they I saw uh Brenda and Aliza. Um I saw their just through a friend's story and they did like an amazing job. Brenda is another really super talented music writer. Okay. Songwriter here. Oh, here do you know Kevin? The saxophone player? Yes. Yeah, yes. That's his wife. Uh-huh. Okay. So his wife is I mean uh, is a singer, singer mm-hmm. songwriter. Yeah. And I would say our styles are pretty similar. She has like a very new age jazz type vibe. Nice. Yeah. It's, um I love going out to the farmers market when I can make it out there, support the local companies and farms and try to try to keep that money within the neighborhood and support the people. Mm-hmm. Local businesses. Most of the time, it's not like you pay a little bit bigger of a price for the produce and stuff. But you know, like I said, you are supporting that company, the companies nearby, and keeping that money within the community. I am gonna put a little bit of this oil on the fish. Let's get a little bit of that so we can really. Get a nice seasoned rub on it. This rice is coming together. It's still got a little bit of too much of a bite to it to be ready. Yeah. That's why it's like you kind of just have to you gotta test it out. You test it out. Wash off the pork if you're feeding one of those people. Person of the same. Yeah. All right. So, what do you? What would you determine as a successful career? A successful career. Yeah. If I could like find a balance between music, painting, modeling, and photography, and videography, mm-hmm. that would be amazing. But honestly, I just <laughs> I feel like I kind of go in phase where I can focus really well on like painting, and then I'll maybe like neglect guitar. But it's like, well, okay, at least I finished like two paintings this week. Yeah. So I kind of do go through these phases, um, and I don't really think I'm ever gonna have a perfect balance the more I live through life, but. I would like to be able to put music on the front, um, on the front at all times. I think I really, most of the time I can do that. Um, I just kind of get in my head too much. And like, when yeah. I think I don't practice, like, oh, I'm going to sound like shit. But the most of the time, like, it's just muscle memory at this point. Do you think weed helps or hurts you when you say you get in your head? Um, um, it depends. Like, you know how some days you can just, like, stress about God, beautiful you can just stress about like you stress about actually doing it and then yeah. when you do it it's like some okay. of the smallest shit it's right. not even that bad it's kind of like that so we're gonna throw that in the oven yeah we're gonna put this in there next to oh huh. well, we're gonna that mid there's many bits what's that about <laughs> So, I think this is this. Yeah. Uh, the fish might only take like 20 minutes or so. Yeah, know. it's not going to take long for it. All right, so they have to be finishing up soon. But I'm going to do the piece on the side real quick. I'm going to show them what's happening with the rice. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. this is what we got going on with the rice. I basically just covered the pan um, with the rice and then I filled just covered it the rice with uh, some broth and you keep kind of doing that until it gets soft enough to um, just be like nice and chewy and have a nice dense texture. This is like some nice uh, gumbo rice. It does kind of look like gumbo rice and you can like go crazy with it. I just added a thyme seasoning and the peppers and stuff. And the red peppers. Yeah. Be careful with those up there. And so once again, I'm sitting here with Simona Sykes, aka Little Baby Thickums, and she's showing me, (laughs) and she's showing me how to whip up some risotto. How has cannabis affected your life, Simona? I was in control. <laughs> <laughs> and then the pandemic happened. <laughs> and then I just woke up eight the day. <laughs> yeah. But I 
mean, all in all, I mean, he has helped me like get to a calm state oh. where I can just be like, was it really that serious? Because I can, I can be like, blow things out of proportion. <laughs> or like, hey, do you have a short fuse? I can. It really just depends on like my mood that day. Obviously, like I'm, I can be a little bit unpredictable, but. I feel like we. Should not turn this off, or is just. Uh, I'm talking about on low, but I should probably turn it off. Um, I don't normally cook with flame either, so I will say that. Okay. Like, I normally cook off with electric. Nice. I love. I prefer flame. It's better. Um, but I mean, how is weed affecting me? It's maybe chill. It's maybe like more sociable. I know, like in social settings, I definitely will have um more like more anxiety without the weed. Uh-huh. Even um. No, you know Nutter Tut? Mm-hmm. You recorded with Nutter Tut. Um, I was over there and I hadn't smoked in like a grip. And I was trying to help him with background vocals. And I was like very just like, I was in more in my head without the weed. Shout out, out to Kenan. Yeah. He's hey, in there Kenan. right now. Good hey, Kenan. What's up, my guy? Get cheesecake. Get Junior's cheesecake. <laughs> I swear it'll change your life while you're in New York. Moved in New York. No, I think he's there for some like opportunity. Some, nice. Or maybe vacation. Either way, get cheesecake. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was recording with him, and then like before I had smoked, I was very like, very cautious, like very uh-huh. just like kind of like meticulous almost. And then without the weed, I was just kind of like letting it flow or with the weed I was letting it flow like it, it was just, on, it was gotcha. less anxious it was just like let's just flow but on the you know back end on there are definitely days where I feel like I got way too high and I don't want to sleep and I like will sabotage myself that happens that just happened this weekend but yeah balance balance balance, balance. Yeah. speaking of balance um what kind of attributes does someone need to have to be successful in a career like yours? Mm, you really? <coughs> you gotta know, like, when, <coughs> excuse me, when and when not to take things so personally. I'm very sensitive. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and so, like, I can use that ability to, like, maybe feel a situation on a different level and, like, write about that experience, but at the same time, you gotta know, like, well, if somebody doesn't really fuck with what you're doing, then hey, that's not your problem, babe. <laughs> you, uh, you just gotta keep going. You gotta be very determined and forgiving, honestly, because you're gonna have times where you get mad at yourself for not doing something the way you wanted to, but you just really have to forgive, forgive yourself before you even start. That's the best thing I ever learned from one of my guitar teachers, because you're never gonna be how you wanted it to be necessarily, so just forgive yourself before you even start, and Okay. Yeah. It's still I'm gonna actually take this off the heat so I don't want this to move it. So I can put it back there. Yeah. yeah. Smooth this. And maybe we can just. This is a power button. So if you want to move back to this one. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So now we have heat. And. Probably use a little bit of oil in the cheese, but I'm gonna let the water and stuff sit down. Ooh, it looks so pretty when you drop it in. Ooh, all that water. Yeah. It's a lot of peas. It is a lot of peas. <laughs> but it, you, you usually use that much? I don't know. We can get all these peas. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late to go back. <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> Or it makes it all of it in. No, it's on the side. It can be on the side. Okay. Oh. Yeah. They are also the house of this. Let me help you out. Uh... <laughs> Alright. Okay, thank you. Right. I'm gonna trick and dial with these things. Right. And then if there's like a spatula or something. Um. Yeah, perfect. Alright. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I could have swore I had a hair tie, but I think I lost it. And huh? I could have swore I had a hair tie, but I think it just kind of came off. Shout out to Holly. Holly Bopri. Holly Shout out to her. Thank you. Get her pictures. You know what? Yeah, we're definitely going to need some, some oil in that bitch. Add a little, little bit of that. A little drizzle. Just going to do one, one teaspoon. Remember, we're not trying to get too high. We're going to keep the THC levels a little low. We're oh, smoking no, no, no. on some pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. You wonder what? How do you know how much is in the oil? So, there's a very secret code that I put in. <laughs> but no, seriously. Um, you're able to take mm -hmm. the amount of THC and multiply it by grams in milligrams mm -hmm. and the amount of oil in milliliters. And once you do this formula, you'll get a number of how many milligrams to turn out per teaspoon and tablespoon. Once you do the calculation of how much, you know, it depends on how much your flour is or your concentrated, you know, whatever okay. you infuse it with. So you take that number and you um, multiply the grams of that by 10,000. Yeah. Like, so like the, oh, the thousands. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. It's that's, a whole math, mathematic. Yeah, yeah it is. Because um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, y'all just be pulling shit out your ass. And I was like, no, nah, like, <laughs> it's a legit way to measure. Um, See, if it was me, it's just not as simple I would be pulling shit out of my ass because I don't fucking <laughs> measure nothing and be like, like, if we get too high, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit's <so>. on you. <laughs> I mean, what point? So, do you add the wine and the last cup of broth in at the same time? You know, honestly, I forgot to add the wine in. You were supposed to add it in the while it was cooking. The risotto, you can add a white wine. White wine to anything will make it taste better, like pasta okay. sauce. Because I know I said you cook some, and then you kind of like you can you cook it out, but you know, oh, you cook it out with any alcohol. You I didn't. I didn't you know that. that so we, so this was for us to celebrate. <laughs> did I even say I need wine? Huh? Did I say well, most of the recipes called for wine. Did, I was like thinking about it. I was like, I was like, yeah, I looked at, I looked up like tons of recipes. Uh, honestly, wine. that's why I brought this because I forgot to ask for wine. But uh, also, if you just put a dash of lemon juice, I might just throw some in there when I heat it up again. But dash of lemon juice will also be sufficient if you're not into alcohol or you're just like, you know, true wine. A lot of people are not drinkers. Something acid. And you know what? The butter also should have been in there, too. But it's okay. We're going to come back. <laughs> and we... <laughs> this is how Look, I listen. We started like 40 minutes late because we went to the store for the butter. And she didn't yeah, even I put the butter not, in it. I bet she about not having butter. And then I forget to put it in. And it wasn't even the butter I wanted, but it's all good. <laughs> What's your favorite strain, man? My favorite stream. Yeah. Um, Blue Dream, just because of the memory. Yeah. Was that one of the first strains you ever smoked? Mm, no, it was just like something funny happened at home. Like, <laughs> I got really high mm -hmm. when I was in, um, you know, in high school, and like, I think I smoked in my room. I'm being bad. <laughs> like, my dad had done something that had just like distracted the fact that I was getting high, and I just like. Thought it was so funny, and I was just laughing my ass off because nobody knew I was high except for me. Yeah. And it was just like the full blue dream. Like, was it even real? Like, what happened that day? <laughs> so yeah, blue dream. Blue dream. Who do you admire most in the music industry? Mm, you know, as a live, probably Frank Ocean. Yeah. He's just mysterious. He makes his music and he did. I feel like we're on that same vibe. Ooh, we're gonna hit with some healing insult. Um, and he makes his own music. He knows how to play piano and guitar and sings beautifully. So. Frank Ocean is one hell of a talent. Is so. Mm -hmm. Shout out to you, Frank. Shout out. He, he's oh, created buddy. some of my uh, my favorite songs, man. And um, a lot of them aren't even like released on major platforms because of the copyright shit. Like, yeah. 
American Wedding, that song was so beautiful when I heard it the first time. I damn near cried. I probably did. It's been cry, a minute. Like, like, that me. was the, like the remix of that. Um, Eagles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had an American Wedding. It was my job. Is this where we had the garlic and everything? Oh, and yes, the, the garlic. <laughs> I'm like not in my element, but that's okay. I'm in this big spacious kitchen, and uh, you know, um, it's easy to get distracted. Yeah, this is the colors. The more colors you eat, man, the better. And you got the rice over there. Fish in the oven. Fish in the oven. Got the olives in the oven. I'm in the oven because I'm baked. So I take peas. I like them a little bit, you know, almost on like the browner side. Gives okay. Some flavor. If they're frozen, you know, you kind of you could give it give a little some extra love. Okay. Extra love. So you're not eating for, I recommend fresh. Fresh peas would probably be like so amazing, but this is what I have right now. Yeah, see. I was poor and um, oh. I didn't go get fresh peas. And she was like, Don't worry about it. I know you poor. I'm going like to bring these weird. frozen peas. I feel like fresh peas are probably working or popping out. Yeah. Yeah, good. Also, this is the point where you can add some butter and everything. So if you got medicated butter, you could add that in as well or regular butter. It's going to be real buttery. This is not even. Probably healthy at this point. It's all good. Just for the mouth, not the body at this point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually added too much butter. <laughs> actually, I don't think it's too much. All right, it looks like about a tablespoon. I'm gonna melt down this one. Yeah. Yeah, it will be good. It's beautiful. It looks yeah. nice. Um, so let me see. What else can I do? Um, what don't we need here? So I can start cleaning some of that up. We we'll probably need other things though, huh? We're done with the rice. We're, our, our, brewery, our barrio rice. We're done with that. A barrio. A barrio rice. We're done with a barrio. That. Get yourself some barrio rice. Let me bring this back up. Very Italian style rice. Mm -hmm. Done with our olives. Hey, can of cake. Uh, shout out to y'all. I definitely can't wait to come cook in y'all kitchen at the bed and breakfast. The one and only bed and breakfast that I support on the East Coast. Love that. Loves it. Medicated bed and breakfast space. Um, so let's get some more of these questions out of the way. Uh, let's see. What's your favorite way to consume cannabis? Smoke this herb. Smoke. You prefer rolling or like a bowl or? Oh, uh, I've always been a bowl kind of girl, but yeah. I do like I will roll my blunts and stuff yeah. on occasion. You prefer blunts over papers? Games specifically. Okay. Like no games over anything. Games. I do. I do like. Was it cognac? Mm -hmm. I think they have like a nice, but games like, they burn slower. They have like less of a gross little tobacco taste. You know what? No, let me not say too much. They're not paying. <laughs> let me not say too much. <laughs> but, but yeah. And if you had 24 hours to uh, spend with somebody dead or alive, who would you spend with? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. I kind of miss let's start. Mind. Let's start with somebody alive, and then okay. we'll and then we'll talk about the person you spend time with. Um, 24 hours. Anybody on the planet? Whole day. You know, that's pretty tough. Um, probably, yeah. What about you? Rihanna, 24 hours. Rihanna. Rihanna. Show me the ways. Rihanna. Take me to the studio. You get little baby thick ups and some Savage Fenty? Please, girl. <laughs> I actually already bought half your store, so, you know, I'm already ready. Hey. <laughs> Let's get her that endorsement, though. Little baby thickums in the Savage Fenty. All right. Yes. Dead. 
somebody dead that you'd like oh, to spend 24 hours with? Somebody dead. You know, I've been missing my grandma pretty, like, a lot recently, so I probably definitely want to catch up with her. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah. See how her cosmic journey is going. And you know what's up there. Yeah. What I have to look forward to. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're talking, like, famous people, um, Amy Winehouse or Jimi Hendrix, Okay. Definitely. Jimmy Winehouse and Jimmy Hendrix. Mm -hmm. Some solid choices right there. That's some solid choices. Yeah, like, I actually had a dream that like I met Jimi Hendrix uh -huh. and like he asked me to play guitar and I was just I felt like the I said no. It's like I felt like that was just the kind of speaking to my truth at that time where I just like didn't feel I mean, you know, that's whatever I still kinda of feel like that, but yeah. So yeah. Alright, cool. You got a crazy smoking story? Crazy smoker story. I mean... So this is the part where we add the last of the broth and the other ingredients. Yeah, right I now. forgot. So, to give um, yeah. yeah, now we about to get a little real, real creative. I don't know if that would be a smoker story that's top of the honestly. But you know, I feel like when my cousin and me smoked like the first time I was like, You already used this, right? Yeah, that's good. We're in the bag. I feel like my bag. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, the first time I smoked weed. Yeah, but say, what about the first time you smoked weed? Um, I like was closing my eyes and I was just like really like, you know, like when you close your eyes, you kind of see like the light and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I was seeing like, tiger and like UFO like almost like alien tigers anyway so that was my first experience so you were tripping tripping I felt like I was like I felt like I was on a different but you know I was not of age to be smoking so I think it's probably better to wait till you uh the brain is a little bit more developed <laughs> definitely <laughs> I would say definitely. that after my um, experience <laughs> I do that's one thing that I do want to say man I want to encourage everybody to wait to you know Wait till your brain's fully developed. Wait till, um, yeah, because you can have a really don't worry story. about social norms, you know. And um, don't be trying to do it for clout and shit. Like weed is not for clout. Weed is for healing, and it's an actual medicinal plant and has its you know medicinal properties. So you know that's that's what I want to encourage y'all to do. If you want to consume cannabis, make sure you're doing it in uh, a respectful manner to yourself and to the plant. Making sure that we, you know, caring about the mother plant. Uh, let's see. You had a magic stick. What are three things you're changing as well? Oh my god, I killed the leaders. Um, <laughs> first thing. Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Please explain why. Why are you killing a billionaire? They're going to fix the world 10 times over if they really wanted to. So I'm going to kill the them. The ones that do want to fix the world they are fixing the world. They could have done it. They could have fucking done it. <laughs> they, yeah, they had their time. Chance to do it. So <laughs> you're killing all the billionaires. One by one. Hand Jeez. with my hand. With the fucking wand. Rihanna's a billionaire. Dead. Kanye's she's, a billionaire. She's not innocent. <laughs> Jay-Z's a they billionaire. They innocent. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So after they're all dead, um, Tyler <laughs> Perry is a billionaire. He's donated so much. <laughs> <laughs> dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious, though. She said, first thing, I'm killing all the billionaires with the first wish of the <laughs> magic wand. Shit. Okay. <laughs> What's the second one? <laughs> I'm kind of scared to. Scared to ask about the second question. No. Shit. Uh, no cruelty towards animals and young people. And just people in general. No cruelty. Yeah. No cruelty. After I killed them. Yeah. So after I killed a billionaire, you think that's going to. Yeah, really... that'll help a lot. And then I'll just like oh, you. That's so bad. Yeah, yeah, I think everything's pretty much done there. Oh my. No hunger with the third wish. Wow. No hunger. No hunger. In world eat. hunger. Everyone can, their lungs can eat weed if they want to, no, no nothing. Okay. And then, 
See, after I kill all the beer, I basically fixed the world's problem right there. <laughs> And, and the queens and kings because they that's were, crazy you know? wow i mean not crazy that's a, that's an idea You're you know guys. it's a it's a reality that you just put up there um <laughs> 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 who are your role models my role model yeah uh, definitely role my models. sister she's a hustler um she's a very creative person always kind of has her hands in different things and Younger or older? Older. I only have one older sister, yeah. Okay. So, two, um, how many siblings do you have? Well, I have like four total. Okay. Yeah, but, um, yeah, four total, but only one sister. Okay. Uh huh. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so she's very creative as well. Yeah. Does she she's, do music or art? Um, she's with the flute, but she's like a writer. And, uh, nice. Yeah, she just like, she wrote, she published a book. Got the name of it. It was called oh. Bar and Dip. Barn Dippity. Barn Dippity. Shout out to her sister. Yeah, she wrote a book. Big Baby Thickles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Little Baby Thickles. And shout out to Big Baby Thickles. Probably, probably just like all my family, like my dad. Yeah. He, um, he pulled himself out from basically nothing. Like he was from a small town in Mississippi. And I don't think he finished college, but he, like, he got with the company, filled mm -hmm. up with it. He got to take us across the world because of his job. I mean, you really can't come from nothing if you put you know, creativity to it. Even though he wasn't like, you know, he was disadvantaged. He had dyslexia. He had other, you know, issues, but he still kind of figured out something for himself. Yeah. And he's always been artistic, so he found like a career where he could be artistic and, you know, make a living for himself. So I definitely go my dad a lot. That's great. Mm -hmm. Shout out to your dad, man. He's, um, from Most, what you just told yeah, me. Yeah, Columbus, Mississippi. He was like, he told me he used to like be a janitor and stuff like that. And now he's doing his thing. So. Nice. Congrats. Yeah. Shout out to your dad. He just got me a car, so hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you value most in friendships? Loyalty. Loyalty. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. There's no, need, there's no need to expand on that. Yeah. Um. What are we doing now? Everything's like kind of done. So do you just mix yeah. it all together? Yeah. I feel like we could definitely mix that in with the rice. Yeah, we can mix it in. Throw it on in. Oh, yeah. Super hot. And then the olives as well. The olives can go on top. The olives on top. All right. Mm. You want to get this throw in action? Oh, yes. Hold on one second. Scoop that. Let's scoop that. So Instagram to see as well. There we go. Boom. Let's get that in. Oh. All right, cool. So I do want to say shout out to everybody who's tuned into the stream tonight. It's been dope seeing y'all come in and out, whether it's on Instagram or on Twitch. Yeah. Facebook and uh, Twitter. Shout out to everybody that's viewing on Twitter right now. Um, I've been sitting here cooking, but learning how to cook. I can't even say I've been cooking it because she's been doing all the whipping up in the kitchen today. Um, but yeah, with Simona Sykes. And I am saying it right, right? Am I pronouncing it right? Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's, that's a lot of people think my last name is Skies. Skies. <laughs> it's Sykes, though. Okay. It's Sykes. Good for you, though. You got it right. Nice. Yeah, so everything is basically you can take a fish out and then plate. Really, you can plate it. Beautiful. This is my second favorite part about cooking is the plating. The first part is the eating. I guess you know the third part. <laughs> Yeah. So I was doing my interview <clears throat> for the cooking competition, and they, one of the questions they asked us was like, well, why do you love cooking for people? And like, I surprised, I guess they were surprised by my answer, because I was like, I mean, I don't. What? You don't like cooking <laughs> like, for people? No. I love cooking for I, people. I love cooking <laughs> for myself, but I rarely like cooking for myself, for real. Um, 
Wow. No, but I mean, that's, the reason why I did the cookbooks yeah. was to empower people to cook with cannabis on their own. Oh, so yeah. they don't have to go. And, oh, it's you know, been a whole lot of. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I feel like one of the like, closest friendships I had when I um, was in college was kind of centered around like us cooking for each other and like learning different stuff. Like, friendship ended, but you know, fuck it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like, don't get me wrong, yeah. like, it's. Um, you definitely get a joy from helping people, and that's why, I mean, I get it even more joy, like, empowering people with the knowledge so they can do it themselves. Yeah. But, I like to see smiles on my friend's face, and then it's like, oh, it's okay. Yeah, I'd be like, yo, I made that medicated fried rice from your cookbook, and I'd be like, yo, that's tight as fuck. Thank I have you. friend potluck. Like, I feel like, I really wish that I did friends with me more than once a year. Cause yeah. Because some, like, some of my friends have really good recipes, so. Start setting it up. Let's do it. We should just like have like an artist potluck. Ooh, yes. I guess I do. Hopefully, it's some more artists that know how to cook and everything. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? I don't need that bullshit. Come with that real shit. Photographers. And it don't have to be cannabis related food. Yeah, it can be regular food. Regular (laughs) food, but I'm gonna show up with the weed. Yeah. You know me. Kitchen isn't quite as big. It's definitely like just like the hallway type deal. And it, it irritates me when anyone else is in there. I'm just like, yo, what do you Hey, want? listen, <laughs> listen. She capital. It's not like a. It's not like a big mansion over here. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not a big mansion, but it is. It's functional enough to where you can have like three or four people in here, and it would not bother you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I like have one person in my kitchen. I'm like. <laughs> can you handle like, me? hey, can you, can you go out Are you that actually way? helping? <laughs> but yeah, um, nice. So now we are yeah. working on the plating. Let me get that up. Beautiful. Okay, and. Once again, shout out Holly. This food has weed in it. This shit was so dope. Shout out to Holly Beaupre. Love you. You're amazing. Check out her work. Book her. Ooh. See the olives, like I said, throw them in there first and forget about them. Same thing if you did like oh. tomatoes. Uh, shallots. Shallots. Yeah. Similar to her. Similar, yes. Oh, all right. So, yeah, I saw her make this on her uh, Facebook, and I was like, you got to show me. And three days later, here we are, her showing me how to make it. These big white plates. I feel like I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You showing the world how to make risotto. Well, you just showed the world how to make risotto. I'll probably put some on there. Like, or the world listen. It was like a podcast. Listen to my life mistakes while I cook food. <laughs> <laughs> or it's not my mistakes, but, you know. Random things about myself. Was there a you making some? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, look at that. I did have like um, wild tuna the other night when I made it and I kind of like mixed it up in there. Mm-hmm. For this one, I think, what was the fish for this? this you got? Uh, tilapia. We got tilapia. some baked tilapia. Okay. So yeah, we're just going to do that on the side this time and just vibe with that. Nice, nice, nice. Tuna. And a dope place, you guys. A little bit of crunchy rice is bomb. Um, yeah. So, um, besides music, what's your what would you think would be your dream occupation? Um, definitely modeling and painting. I did start my little art business, little art baby. You can follow that L I L A R T B A P I. And I like honestly, I've done like a lot of different styles, like acrylic, watercolor. But I kind of grew up a little bit more doing like 
collage style mixed media. So okay. I might go back into that. But yeah, probably find the best of both worlds in some art. Did you hit this up? Um, you can go ahead. Go for it. Oh, I played, yeah. So while she's played, I'm going to go ahead and smoke some more of this gelato from Lape Urban that you can find at Cure Leaf. Do you have the spatula still? Is it my favorite? I guess I didn't spray some non-stick on that first. Yeah, but it's all right. <laughs> I did. I got high and got excited. Fish on the uh -oh. side. How does she do it? How does she play? Oh lord, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Some crusty fell off. Does he want fish too? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. lost. All right. Oh. So, did you want this one or this one? Well, now we have our olive oils. So these are nice and like... Oh! <laughs> the ones that make it to the plate. Yeah, these are nice and crisp. <laughs> you know, honestly, that's part of life in cooking. Yeah, especially when you cook hot. Some are going to... Some are going to end up on the side of the some. road. <laughs> Medicaid. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you might be high, shit. Yeah. I'll take that on the next year. Yeah, right. 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 Excuse me. That's it, really? I mean, oh, yeah, we're done. Hey, oh, hey Parmesan. I, I lied. <laughs> this is one company whose logo I don't care about showing because. They hey. made some bomb ass Parmesan cheese since I was a kid. But luckily, we ain't gonna shut it up. But y'all see the grain top. You already know what the fuck it is. All right. Um, I just got a few more questions before we can actually wrap up the interview. Um, what motivates you? Mm, what if? The what if? The what if. What if I do this and then I can have this? Like I don't know, just the possibility of. Oh, you know, just like the possibility of not knowing what you have and just doing it. Like, yeah. Uncertainty. Yeah. It's like uncertainty kind of motivates me because like like I know I have to have it. So it's like when things kind of feel uncertain, like, well, what if I do this and I'll see how it gets me closer to my goal. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's your? You got a life motto? Uh, Shout out to Zion in the back. She's so cute. Listen to your gut, I think. Listen to your gut? Listen to your gut. All right. That's a good, good one to go by. Uh, what do you consider your greatest achievement? Um, my greatest achievement? Um, it wouldn't be anything like monetarily bought or anything. Probably just the experience of just pursuing life it takes a while to strength to you know? Yeah. So, that would so, be it, yeah. Making it to where you at right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you're getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. Yes. Yeah, so, so we have a vegetarian option. So if you guys um, don't fuck with fish, don't fuck with chicken, you just put roasted olives or put some um, tomatoes in the oven to forget about them. And then throw them on top later, and it'll be like a nice little. Yeah, see, those are supposed to be tomatoes, but. That's all good. Yeah. Because they're going to be <laughs> nice and salty, little. Yeah. And then you got a pescatarian option, 
with the fish. Pesky pescatarians. No. <laughs> you said pesky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lighting. Oh, there we go. There, there it is. is. Hell yeah. There we go. Beautiful. Medicated meal. This is nice. I can't. I have, I'm high and I haven't even tried it yet. But mm -hmm. I'm high because we definitely have been smoking some fire, fire mm -hmm. fish. Um, ten years from now, where do you see yourself? Um, I have at least two homes, and by ten years, I guess I would have a kid. Even though I don't want a kid right now, and I think about it, but I would have a kid <laughs> in ten years. All right. And um, last one, we're gonna leave this off. Uh, we're gonna end off with this one. What's the goal you hope to accomplish by the end of this year? By the end of this year, I hope to be more confident in my art business and definitely get in the studio and at least record three songs, even though I have a lot more than that, just to like, whatever. Do it. Do it. Yeah. You got it. Oh, yeah. You dope as fuck. <laughs> you can cook. And that has nothing to do with your art skills, but it shows how patient you are and how creative you are. You Thank can you. stick through that. You can stick through the creating process. I've seen you perform. Your art is amazing. And that's why we're obviously here today. Um, I needed to spend the time with you and get your story out into the world. Thank you. So it's been I, an honor to be your first guest on the show. It's, you know, yeah. First live guest cooking on Can of Cooking with Motoski. Yeah. And uh, thank you. I definitely appreciate you coming on. And, Helping out today has been a pleasure having you cook with me and show me this recipe. Um, this is definitely one of the recipes that I'm considering for the next book. So oh, yeah. I'm excited to see uh, to how can I adapt. Yeah. yeah. You so know, you like I got a couple ideas when we were creating it about how I'll, uh, how I'll adapt it and everything. But like I said, Simona, thank you for coming on. Um, everybody, please make sure you go support this young lady. Find her on Instagram at Lil Baby Thickums. And um, soon you'll be able to find her music on all streaming platforms. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for asking. No problem. Thank you. I'm about to eat this fucking Woo! food. Now. <laughs> all right, y'all. Right, so you just watched another episode of Can of Cooking with Lutoski, the first episode with the live guest. And shout out to Simona for hopping on, for real. Uh, it was an honor having her here in the kitchen. Like I said, it's the first time I've had somebody in here cooking with me um, on the episode. And she brought her own recipe and we just, you know, laced it up with some medicated coconut oil. And uh, how does it taste? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's quiet as shit. She's like, yep. Yep. Um, so obviously I'm about to go ahead and get my taste on. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Once again, you can find all the merch at Latoski.com. And you can visit ManifestedThis.com to find episodes of the podcast, music, and more. Uh, um, I'll get some material up, some behind-the-scenes photos, and that'll be on the website. So y'all could go ahead and check this out and see everything that we did together. Um, but once again, man, I thank y'all enough. Shout out to everybody that's listening from America to overseas. I appreciate all my listeners, all the viewers. Uh, shout out to the people in Russia who just started uploading my shit to their sites. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Honestly, yo, that shit was crazy. Uh, Russia started uploading my shit to their um, music boot sites. So that was tight. That's an honor. I appreciate it. Um, what else? Shit, man. Shout out to all the artists out there yeah. still grinding. Man. Every day is a Shout out to the fucking, yeah. Especially in the heat. <laughs> man, oh, shout dude. out to the fucking artists out there grinding, man. Stay with it and uh, keep up. And um, I appreciate it. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all soon, man. Go copy your merch right now. Black is successful, all that shit. Latoski.com. <laughs>